Artemi Panarin, Andrei Kuzmenko, Maxim Siplakov, and now we have ourselves another. Today we are going over some of the latest news in regards to NHL bidding wars. Because when it comes to four teams, we're talking today about the Maple Leafs, the Predators, the Utah Hockey Club, and the New York Islanders. Because it was reported about last week that there is another young name in Russia that these teams are all going to be interested in acquiring. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to turn your attention to, for Tractor Chelyabinsk in the KHL, Maxim Shabanov. Now, before we dive into Shabanov and his entire profile, let's talk about the scoop. Why exactly we're talking about this guy here? It's because last week, there was an article published by Ethan Sears on the New York Post going over how the Islanders, of course, it's the New York Post, right? So it's a New York-based platform. The Islanders are in early on young Russian standout Maxim Shabanov. The article is funny, because it opens up here by talking about how Maxim Siplakov may not be the last Russian import the Islanders consider. The Islanders are one of four teams so far to ask after Traktor Chelyabinsk forward Maxim Shabanov, the Post has learned, with the Maple Leafs, the Preds, and Utah being the others. Now, that is kind of funny. We had spoken about Maxim Siplakov in a video just a few hours ago, how he is in the rookie conversation, how he is on the Islanders organization, and how he's actually gotten off to a pretty all right start. Let's dive into Maxim Shabanov and go over what this player could offer, because he's a little bit younger. He offers a little bit more. Shabanov is 24 years old, October 7th, 2000 is the birth date, so he's younger than I am. 5'8", 157, left-handed center right winger. Definitely not the biggest guy out there, but his point production speaks for himself. Because last season, for Tractor Chelyabinsk, Maxim Shabanov had 50 points in 64 games played, on top of 11 points in 14 games in the KHL playoffs. This season, he's on pace for 77 points in 68 games, as he currently has 17 in 15 games. Go over to the KHL and see who leads the league. Shabanov is tied for first in the entire KHL with Kirill Pilipenko and defenseman Trevor Murphy. It's kind of funny how Murphy is up here with 17 points in 15 games as a D-man, but Shabanov is right there too. Shabanov is a really interesting, small, skilled forward who even made his presence known by scoring a Michigan goal earlier in his KHL career. If you go back over to the article in the New York Post, it talks about where exactly everything lies. At this stage, there are only conversations. There have been no meetings between Shabanov and any of the American clubs, and as of yet, no scouts have made the trip to see him in person, per a source. Like with Maxim Siplakov, the expectation is that Shabanov's suitors will eventually grow to 10 to 12 teams in total by the end of the season, when he is expected to make a decision. The 24-year-old Shabanov is listed as having played both wing and center, and has spent the entirety of his four KHL seasons thus far with Chelyabinsk, located south of Yekaterinburg in central Russia. The presence of European scouting whisperer Jim Paliafido, who helped land Maxim Siplakov, could help land the Islanders with Shabanov as well. Siplakov, who chose the Islanders over a number of other teams last spring, is likely to start the season in the top six after a standout camp in which he beat out Pierre Engvall to play alongside of Brock Nelson and Palmieri. Now, this is where we dive into a little bit of the nuance, because it's not just the New York Islanders that are interested in Shabanov. We have noted this over the past few years, how the Isles kind of need more offense, and they were trying to bolster up their team with guys like Bo Horvat, with guys like Anthony Duclair. They've always had that reputation of being a defensively-minded hockey club, and with Maxim Saplakov getting added on last season, it was a pretty big dub for the team. Now, Shabanov is going to hopefully follow in Siplakov's footsteps. But before we dive into some of the other teams that are interested or are reportedly interested in Shabanov, let's go over to this article published on EyesOnIsles.com by Michael Stahursky. This was from a week ago as well, a dive into potential Islanders free agent target Maxim Shabanov. It goes over his entire profile here. Shabanov is a highly skilled winger, finishing 16th in KHL points last season and 9th in goals. This season, he is currently tied for 2nd in points with 14 through 12 games. With that incredible skill Shabanov possesses, he scored one of the goals of the season last year, pulling off a Michigan-style goal from behind the goal, giving his team a 5-4 lead in the third period of Tractor's game against Avangard Omsk. 
and you can see that he does pull off a very nice lacrosse style goal here, camped out behind the goal line and pulling the puck around. There's consistency in his actions. He is a talented player, says former KHLer Evgeny Artyukin, according to Alini Savanova of Express Sport. He has been playing brightly for several seasons. The biggest knock on Shabanov is his size, 5'8", 157, which would make him extremely undersized as far as NHL standards go. The Islanders, in particular, we're still focusing on the Isles here because it's an Islander Central article, have had a player in their ranks of similar stature in Ruslan Ishkakov, who left the organization this offseason to join the KHL. Both players are in similar sizes, yet in Ishkakov's two seasons playing in the Islanders organization, he appeared in just two games. It's hard to imagine Lou Lamorello would be interested in a player similar to someone whom they let walk, but maybe he sees something different in Shabanov. The article then talks about how the Islanders might have a little bit of a leg up in trying to get Shabanov because of their connections with Siplakov and the Jim Paliafido scout whisperer thing too. Now, I wanted to also talk about the other teams that are interested in this guy, at least so far, the Maple Leafs, the Preds, and Utah. Honestly, I feel like Utah would be the best combination for this guy because with everything the hockey club in Utah has been building, I mean, you just think about the identity of that team. Who are the Utah Hockey Club's best players? Clayton Keller, Barrett Hayden, Logan Cooley, Dylan Genther, these guys are all young, these guys are all skilled. Shabanov would fit right in with the age range and the talent profile of that club. It's kind of funny, you know? Like, Arizona had these guys cooking in their organization for years, Cooley, Hayden, Keller, Genther. But not until they're in Utah do they actually start popping off and putting themselves in the top of the league conversation in terms of points and everything else. I mean, does Genther still lead the league in goals? He might at this point. It's been a while, but he's still there. Maybe just the reinvigoration of everything by bringing them all to Utah and having this surge of energy and having the fans and the big building and actually being in an NHL arena, maybe that ultimately allowed these guys to unlock their true potential, and adding a skill guy like Shabanov, who is small but still very nifty on his hands, that could be a huge addition. As for some of these other teams, Toronto, I'm not necessarily too sure if Shabanov would fit really well with what they're building there, mostly because I feel like Toronto has relied more on high-intensity skill for a long time. It's kind of the same thing with Utah, to be honest, but like, with Toronto, there is such a level of disappointment that seems to always be there in the playoffs that I don't necessarily know if Shabanov would fit with that kind of a team in this kind of a timeline. Like, with Utah, you could make the argument, hey, they're still growing, they're still getting better, Siplakov could be a huge addition to that. For Toronto, they're supposed to be a cup contending team, is a small skill guy from Russia really the piece they need to get over the hump? Honestly, I wouldn't think so. I'd think there'd be a better opportunity for Shabanov in Utah, and for Toronto, there'd just be more expectations. Same you could say for the Nashville Predators, although they're in sort of a, let's just say, retooling on the fly as well. They needed to get more offense. They were so good defensively and goaltending-wise for the past few years that really adding on goal scoring in the form of Stamkos and Marcheseau so this offseason, that was a really big step. And if you wanted to add on another skill dude to maybe give them that piece they need to get over the first round or so, then Shabanov makes sense. For Toronto, I think there's too much of an expectation for them to be good and too much criticism towards their skill play that I think they might not actually be a good fit for Shabanov in this case. I'd rank it as follows if I wanted to go most probable and best situations for Shabanov to worst, I'd say it goes Utah, New York, Nashville, and then Toronto, with Toronto being like a really far fourth place down there in the depth chart. Either way, though, if it were up to me, I'd say Shabanov should probably go to Utah. That'd be awesome, but you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this KHL skilled forward being of interest in some sort of a bidding war capacity for four teams to open up the season? This will just increase as the season goes on. We'll see more teams like Detroit. We'll see potentially Montreal getting involved there. We'll see a lot of teams stepping in and saying, hey, we want this guy. So that by the time the free agent pool opens on July 1st, Shabanov is going to be hounded by a whole bunch of NHL teams, potentially even a third or a half of the league. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the early rumblings of a bidding war here between Utah, the Isles, Toronto, and Nashville for Tractor Shelly Abing's KHL forward Maxim Shabanov. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rolls 99 and bye.